Welcome to The Avenue. We are so honored that you're joining us online today for this special message. If you haven't already, be sure to turn on your notifications and subscribe so you receive alerts each time we upload new content. Okay, so today we're continuing our series that we have titled Core, where we're picking apart some essential values of who we are that we believe will forever change your life. So let's look at it. Psalm chapter 78. I want to read verses 9 through 22, and just to bring you up to speed on where this is, the, the children of Israel have been led out of captivity, out of slavery from Egypt, and they've gone through this cycle of obedience, disobedience, and they're still in it, and they, they've actually gone to the, the promised land, they've divvied up the land, and, and so they're, they're living where they are, and some of them are just losing their minds, and, um, but none of us would ever do that, so shame on the children of Israel. So let's, uh, let's look at it, verse 9. It says, the men of Ephraim, though, though armed with bows, turned back on the day of battle, and they did not keep God's covenant, and they refused to live by his law, even after all he'd done. They forgot what he had done, the wonders that God had shown them. He did miracles in the sight of their ancestors in the land of Egypt, in the region of Zoan. He divided the sea and led them through. He made the water stand up like a wall. He guided them with the cloud by day and with light from the fire at night, all night. He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them water as abundant as the seas. He brought them streams out of a rocky crag or cliff and made water flow down like rivers. But they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the wilderness against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food that they craved. They spoke against God. They said, can God really spread a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock and water gushed out. Streams flowed abundantly. But can he also give us bread? Can he supply meat for his people? And when the Lord heard them, he was furious. His fire broke out against Jacob and his wrath rose against Israel. For they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. Write this down if you're taking notes. The title of the message today is Life with No, no Limits. Life with No Limits. Somebody shout, no limits. no limits. Life with No Limits. God, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing at the Avenue Church. And God, thank you, Lord, for what you've been doing in your house this morning. And Lord, I thank you for the beautiful people that are standing right here in this auditorium and the amazing people joining with us online today. And we just give this time to you. We've come here today for you, to worship you, and grow stronger in your presence and in your word. And so God, as, as your word is preached, let it penetrate every heart, change us, challenge us. Lord, let us be different, different in the way we walked in. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Life with no limits. Are there any cereal fans in the house today? Love some cereal. On the count of three, shout out your favorite cereal. One, two, three. Okay. I brought some Captain Crunch with me today. Captain Crunch is ridiculously good, but however, it will destroy the roof of your mouth. And so you got to pace yourself a little bit with Captain Crunch. But when I think of life with no limits... Obviously, one would think about cereal. Obviously. And so um, I think about things that try to limit us. Things that do try to limit us are these things, bowls. They, they try to limit the blessings that God has for us. Now, I, I, don't, know, I don't know how you eat your cereal in your house. Um, but my wife and I, we've been married 19 years. And to this day, she still criticizes me on the way that I prepare the blessings of the Lord. And so I saw something not too long ago, I don't, and I don't know who in the world it posted it, but I think I've, saw, I've seen it a couple of times, but somebody posed the question of like, do you pour the milk or the cereal first? And I thought, what kind of dumb question is that? Because if you pour the milk first, you cannot put hardly any cereal in your bowl. But when you pour the cereal first, you can get so much more in there, and then you add the milk. I mean, what... I don't know what 
how you pour your cereal in foreign countries, but in America, pour the cereal first. And if, and if you're, you know, if you're a normal person pouring a bowl of cereal, you could say, eh, that's pretty, that's a, that's a good size. That's a serving size. <laughs> that's, prob that's probably three serving sizes right there. But, but maybe, you're, maybe you're a little above, above average, and you'd say, you know what? That looks, that looks more like a good, healthy bowl of cereal. But maybe y'all can help my wife out understand something. That there is still plenty of room for more in this bowl of cereal. And she, she watches me every time going, are you done? I'm like, after 19 years, you're still going to question the way that I pour my cereal. I pour my cereal. It's going to have to overflow some. And then whatever does come off, I'm going to push it to the middle. And I'm going to pile it up so that when the milk does go in, yeah, it may overflow a little bit. But that, that's a bowl of cereal. Can I get an amen? That's, that is life with no limits right there. Come on, somebody say life with no limits. You know, God is a God of no limits. So, so we should be able to live our lives with no limits. But in Psalm chapter 78 from our text, the Bible says later on down in verses 41 and 42, it says, yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. In other words, they limited God because they stopped trusting in God. They limited God because they stopped worshiping God. They limited God because they stopped praising God. And here's what I want to show you right off the bat this morning. The miracle you receive will be determined by the praise that you give. Can I say it again? The miracle you receive will be determined by the praise you give. The size of your praise will determine the size of the blessing that is coming your way. You, you, you find me a church with there is no praise, and I'll show you a church that has limited God to what he can and will do. That's why at the Avenue Church, don't let it catch you off guard if you're sitting next to someone who's a big praiser in the house today. They're just believing for something big to come their way. Oh, are there any big praisers at the Avenue Church this morning? Any, anybody who's a big praiser? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're a big praiser, slap your neighbor and say, I'm a big praiser, baby. I'm a big praiser. In our text, their praise stopped because they limited God. It's not that God was limited, but rather it was their faith and what they believed God could do. Understand this, Avenue. Our faith and our worship are connected. Christianity in its core has certain pillars that uphold what we believe. And two of them are faith and worship. They are interconnected. Somehow faith helps my worship and worship helps my faith. They are connected. And when my faith is attacked, it hinders my worship. Y'all with me? 11 o'clock. So get this. True worship and faith have God as their target. True faith is not believing for something. No, no. It's believing in God. And if my faith is not in place, then my worship will be out of place. The miracle you receive will be determined by the praise that you give. So I've come to tell the Avenue Church today, don't ever let the size of your problem bring down the size of your praise. In fact, let it do the opposite. The bigger your problem is, the bigger your praise should be. Why? Because God responds to our praise and nothing is too hard for our God and you are believing for something big to come your way come on 11 o'clock somebody help me today may this house always be a house with something big coming from it and let it be your praise today because our faith is in a big God who is strong who is mighty who is able oh, I wish I had some people in the 11 o'clock service who's in need of God doing something big in your life why don't you take a moment and let out to take the limits off praise and let him know that you know that he is able. Woo! Come on, give God a big shout of praise. Come on, turn to your whole area and tell him I'm a no limit praiser. I'm a no limit praiser. I'm a no limit praiser. I'm a no limit 
Praise her. Thought I told you. That's why I wore my camouflage today. I'm a no limit praiser. Come on online, talk to me. I'm a no limit praiser. But the problem, the problem with some Christians today, not this house, the problems with some Christians today is the limit we allow the enemy to put on our faith is revealed through our lack of praise. Can we handle this today, 11 o'clock? You find me a church where there is no praise, and I'll show you a church that has limited God to what he can and will do. So, so I brought some other things that will help me today. I know we're on 20 days of prayer and fasting, so I'm just <laughs> testing you a little bit, depending on what you're fasting. And when, when, you, when you first give your life to Christ, when you first give your life to Christ, this is, this is, what, you, this is what you look like. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. And, and when you give your life to Christ, I mean, you're fired up, man. You love Jesus. You're new to this whole church thing. Like, you're a big praiser, right? You're, you're excited to be at church. You actually show up on time for church. You get there before the third song. You're, you're excited. You, when you first give your life to Christ, you realize that you're... You're here for him, not he here for you. And <laughs> you're excited, man. It's, it's good to, to know Jesus. And you know, I think about the portion sizes that we have when we first give our life to Christ. Like when you first give your life to Christ, you don't know better. I mean, you, you're, you're like, you're a Jesus freak to people who have been in the religious circle for a while I mean when we I mean you don't know that when you've been saved for several years you become sanctified and dignified and it doesn't take all that anymore and you, you actually may come down to the front and worship during service I mean it's just like you're crazy I'm crazy things happen when you first give your life to Christ right now think about the portion. You know, this is this is this is one candy bar. This is one serving size. That's one. I feel better about that because this one ain't. This is three serving sizes. So for those of you who got you a bag of M and M's and thought, oh, it's only 140 calories, times three. <laughs> but that's you. When you give your life to Christ, like I mean, that's good, right? These Swedish fish. I mean, don't tell me now. Don't confess now. But if you've ever eaten the whole bag by yourself at one time, um, that's 110 calories. Times eight. So, I mean, hey, it's good though, right? It's good you give your life to Christ. But, but, then, but then something happens along the way. Life happens. For some reason, sometimes we think like, hey, I've given my life to Christ, therefore I don't have any problems. Nothing bad's ever going to happen. But then something does happen, and it kind of rocks you, and, and you go from this. It's like you go from this to this. Overnight, you were good, but then something happened, and now you've limited your faith. Or, or maybe, maybe you were this, and you were the, you were the Jesus freak. Wow, I love you, Jesus. Wow. But then somebody comes to you and say, "Hey, brother, don't take all that." And kind of squash your, your zeal and your excitement, and your passion for the Lord. And you, you used to be this, but now you're. You've limited, your, and what happens is, is you've, gone for, you've gone from faith in, in God to all things are possible to limited. Maybe he can. I've seen him do it before. Maybe, maybe it was just for them. And you limited your faith. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, somebody say limitless, limitless, limitless. Remember, the miracle you receive will be determined by the praise that you give. Maybe you used to be that person. Maybe you see somebody in church who's passionate about Jesus. You're thinking, man, I used to be that person. And somebody told you to calm down. Don't take all that. You've allowed the enemy to put limits on your faith and your praise. And the problem is you don't praise God like you should because you've allowed the enemy to convince you that you serve a limitless God, a limited God. 
A limited God. In our text today, we're reminded of, of what went on with the Israelites as God delivered them out of bondage and slavery. And so it says in verse 30, 41 and 42, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remember not his hand or the day when he delivered them from the enemy. They spent so much time complaining about their situation that they stopped praising their God, which put limits on what God would do. They put limits on God. They completely forgot how he took care of things before and when you replace praise with complaining you are limiting God to what he can do in your life come on touch your neighbor and say don't lose your praise baby don't lose your praise don't lose your praise and there may be some people here today who have just simply forgotten you've forgotten how good God has been and how good he's been to you so stop complaining about all of your problems and start praising God for all of his promises come on somebody shout take the limits off oh I don't know about you but I'm never going to forget how good that God has been to me when I think about the Lord and how he saved me when I was a mess how he loved me when my life was jacked up how he redeemed me and restored me and renewed my hope and renewed my strength Hey, when I think about my family and I think about how he's given me a wife and two healthy kids I've got food in my life I've got shelter over my head I've got clothes on my back I have transportation to get to where I need to go I woke up today in a right mind in good health and I was allowed to come in to the house of God and praise him I will never forget how good God has been to me oh come on if you are thankful for all that God's done for you give him a big shout of praise today Woo! come on touch somebody and tell him he's been too good to me he's been too good to me to, when I think about when I think about where we were in 2013 look around the room in 2022 and you're seeing faithfulness in this house you're, you're, you're sitting amongst miracles in this house yeah miracles sitting right here in this house we should never stop praising God can I get an amen so let me give you three things about life with no limits. Here we go. Number one, write this down. Don't limit your faith by getting too familiar with God. Don't limit your faith by getting too familiar with God. Well, Pastor Joseph, I thought he was a, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Well, well listen, hear me out right here. Don't limit your faith by getting too familiar with God. Verse 17 and 18 of our text, but they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the wilderness against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they craved. The children of Israel had become so familiar with God that they thought they could say whatever they wanted to to him. They thought that they could just rant and rave and complain and somehow that would get God's attention. They thought if they would just complain long enough, then God would get off of his rear end and do something about it. Newsflash Avenue. Complaining does not get you God's attention, but celebrating who he is and what he can do will always bring God into your situation. We've become too familiar with God that we don't operate out of faith any longer. We've become too familiar with God in a way that we think we can tell him how he can and cannot operate in our lives. We've become too familiar with the Holy Spirit in a way that we think that we can tell him how and when and where he can move in our lives and our services. Too familiar. With God. Mark chapter 6, 1 through 5, Jesus is taking a trip to his hometown, and it says Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's the wisdom that, that, that has been given him, and what are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Here it goes. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son? And the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Aren't these his sisters that are here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Jesus walked into Nazareth. Aren't you Mary's son? You're just a carpenter. This passage doesn't mean that 
Jesus ran out of miracles for his hometown. No, no. They just put limits on him. They put limits on faith. Oh, it's just Jesus. It's, I remember him when he was 11. It's just Jesus. They became too familiar and too comfortable with God in flesh that they didn't even realize, they didn't even care to realize how powerful he was. And for us today, it's not that God has run out of miracles. It's just that everywhere that we go in the church world, we've got limits on God because we've become too familiar with him. We've labeled him down to just being our homeboy. And we forget that we're standing on holy ground in God's house with the power of God right before us. Oh, it's just Jesus Oh, it's just Sunday morning at church. Oh, it's, it's just our life group. Oh, it's just time for worship. I can be late. It's just time for prayer. And because the church has become too familiar with the holy and powerful things of God, we've limited him right out of our churches. And we've limited ourselves out of the miraculous and out of signs and out of wonders. It's awfully quiet in here at 11 o'clock. Are we Okay. There's a story in the Bible in John chapter 9 where, where this man who was born, from, born blind from birth is amongst them. And the people said, Jesus, who sinned, this man or, or his parents? And Jesus said, well, neither. But this was done so that the glory of God could be revealed through him. And so Jesus spits in the dirt, makes a mud ball, shoves it in this dude's face. Instead of laying our hands on you and anointing you with oil in services, what if we brought you down full here when, and just had a whole pack of dirt and just started spitting in it? <laughs> Jesus rubs this mud. There's so, there's so much. Ah, oh, I wish I had time. There's so much in this story. <laughs> Jesus put his DNA in this man's DNA. And when his DNA came infused inside this other man's DNA, the man's DNA had to line up with the man's DNA. And the Bible says that this man was told, Jesus said, hey, go wash and come back. And he does. He comes back seeing, right? A miracle takes place. The question is, why don't we believe like this anymore? Oh, we've, we've limited the supernatural out of our churches and out of our ministers. But check this, at the avenue, we will not grow complacent and become too familiar with the supernatural presence of the Almighty God. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 6 that God, that he could not do many miracles there because they were too familiar and because of their complacency. Hear me, Avenue. God's desires are about to take us to a place where we've never been before as a church. And we cannot get so familiar with God that we think that we can act like we want and live how we want and worship when we only feel like it and then try to boss God around and then wonder why he doesn't answer our prayers. Listen, God does not operate by our commands, but rather by our confidence and our faith in his awesome power in other words he is a responder God come on touch your neighbor tell him he's a responder God he's a responder God so if you're in need of a response from God take the limits off today by turning your complaining into praising oh it's just time for worship it's just time for church it's just time for prayer it's just time for word oh I've come to declare the avenue it's not just church it's Sunday morning baby and it's time to enter the place where the glory of God God shows up it's time to worship and when we praise and when we worship the power of God shows up it's time for prayer and when we pray faith rises and anything can happen it's time for the Word of God and somebody's life is about to change so don't get so familiar with God that you put a limit on what he can do you praise you worship you pray you trust you stay on the Word of God you take the limits off that's your job and let God do his thing and respond to your radical faith. Come on, somebody shout, take the limits off. Take the limits off, take the limits off. Come on, high five your neighbor and tell him, take the limits off. Take the limits off. Take the limits off. Don't limit your faith by getting too familiar 
Look, are you kidding me? We are in the house of God today. No, Pastor, this, 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 is, this is just the old Win Dixie. No. No, this isn't the house of God, Pastor. This, this, this is the old Fred's building. Let me help you understand something, bruh. Let me help you understand something. Honey, no, no, this isn't no longer us renting from somebody who owns a building. This is now the Avenue Church. This is the house of God. This is the place where miracles happen. This is the place where the presence of the Almighty God steps in a room and changes people's lives and sets people free and heals the sick and restores the broken. This is the house of God. You are standing on the holy ground. Do, do, you, do you realize that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever? The same God who stepped out on creation's platform and said, let there be light. Is the same God that steps in a room called the church and moves in power and changes lives. Come on, if you're thankful to be in the house of God, give him a big shout of praise today. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on, turn to somebody in your area and say, welcome to God's house. Welcome to God's house. This, this, is, this isn't just a building. This, this isn't just a building. You're not just sitting in a chair. You're, you're, you're not just coming to hear a cool song. Like if you, if you realize it, you understand that your praise and your worship pierce the darkness. Oh, I, saw, I, I didn't like that song today. That's all right. Stay stuck in your situation while the rest of us get set free and receive blessings. And you don't want yours, I'll take yours too. No, this, this, this is just part of the service where they, they, they take up money and the church trying to take everybody's money. And that's all that pastor wants to do at the Avenue Church is just take her money. They're just in it for how much money they can get. That's all right. You miss your blessing, I'll take yours too. Because what you've got to understand is that, hey, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And God's just saying, do they trust me? And when you trust God with your finances, he'll open heaven over your life and pour out so many blessings that you can't even contain it all. That's not my word. That's Bible. But if you want to miss your blessing, I'll take yours too. No, no, this, this, is, just part of the, this is just part of the service where pastor gets up there and just... Speaks about the Lord. This, this right here is life-giving, life-changing, and sharper than any double-edged sword. Pierces your soul and changes. You know there's healing in this word? You know that you don't have to wait for somebody to lay hands on you and pray for you, but there is healing found in the Word of God. I don't know who this is for right here, but somebody, you need some bread for your soul. You need a miracle in your life. Apply the Word of God. Everything you need is in the Word of God. Ah, oh, it's just the Word. It's just the Word. It's just the Ah, oh, this, this is just a time where I'm supposed to bow my head, close my eyes. And, and, and don't peek. <laughs> this, is time, it's, this is just time where they pray. Do you understand prayer is your lifeline? It is your connection to God. There is power. When you pray, things change. I, no, this just, no, just nothing. This is the house of God. This is the miracle zone. Anything can happen. In this place, in this place, I got to keep going. Don't limit your faith by getting too familiar with God. Don't you dare wake up ever again on a Sunday morning and go, ah, I guess I got to go to church. Are you kidding me? You get to get yourself out of bed in America in freedom and drive yourself to the house of God 
and show up and worship and surround yourself with people who love God and, and love you. No, you get to come to the Almighty God's house. Next Sunday, you should have your alarm set early so you can make it on time for worship. And so I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. Woo! Now, don't get so familiar. Don't get so familiar with the holy things of the Lord, you lose respect and honor for the things of God. You, you want to you usher the miracles of God out of your life? Get too familiar. Here's a second one, number two. God's past proves that he can handle your future. God's past proves that he can handle your future. Verse 19 and 20. They spoke against God. They said, can God really spread a table in the wilderness? True. He struck the rock and water gushed out. Streams flowed abundantly. I mean, see the sarcasm here. But can he also give us bread? I mean, can he supply meat for his people? This is referring to the children of Israel and how they had seen some of the most amazing things happen in the Bible. And somehow they had the nerve or the stupidity, either way you look at it, to wonder if God could actually supply them with what they needed. It blows my mind how they could witness what they witnessed and still ask the question, can God really, can God really, my son and I, we've started working out together. He's, he's come of the age where he can, uh, he can work out a little bit and not hurt his growth because I think that's important as a young person. You don't push them too much too early and mess up their growth. And so we've, we've been going to the gym and um, I started I'm starting him off light for obvious reasons. I mean, if you, if you work out at all and you, you can remember that first time you ever worked out, you question life the next day. I mean, you're, you're sore in areas that you had no idea could be sore. You're washing your hair like this. I mean, you, you can't even. You're just getting soap on your hands and like throwing it. Like just. <laughs> hurting everywhere. We did chest. We did chest that first day. And, and that next day in the truck, I reached over. <laughs> I reached over and just went ping, ping right here. And he was, oh, dad, oh, dad. So, I'm pretty sure his soul levitated for about 30 seconds. <laughs> but y'all, if you've ever worked out, you know that day, you know that first day. And, and so we're in, we're in there and, you know, I'm starting out light. We're, I'm showing him some bench press, how to do bench press. And he's doing bench press. And, and, and I, it's, it, you start off, if you know anything about working out, like you don't just throw on as much as you can first time around, first set. And so I'm warming myself up, and then I get to where I'm, I'm going to put, I put 225 on there to, to bench press, and, and Judah says, Dad, get, are you sure you can do that? <laughs> I was like, Judah, am I sure I can do this? And I sat down, and I went, you know, it has been a minute. I've been... I started questioning life for a second. It's maybe a little embarrassing in front of my son if I, oh, a little help. <laughs> I thought, Lord, if you love me, if you love me right now, give me the strength of Samson and just. I didn't let him know that. I didn't let him know that. I was interceding at the time, but he didn't know that. And I get down and I was like, oh, yeah, I still got it. You better know, boy, I still got it. I felt it the next day, too. Can you, can, you still, can you still do that? Can you do that? Can you do that? Can God really? John chapter 6, you hear a story of when Jesus is performing miracles and he's, he's collecting a crowd because, I mean, people want to see and hear what Jesus is doing and what he's teaching. And, and, and there's 5,000 men, and, and the Bible says, you know, 5,000 doesn't include the women and children, and so there's more like 15 to 20,000 people are gathered to hear Jesus teach and, and, and witness the miracles that he's performing, and it gets to the end of the day, and, and, and Jesus said, well, how are we going to feed all these people? And, 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 and he's doing that to test them because he already knew what was going to happen, and one of, the, one of the disciples said, well, listen, it's going, it would take half, half a year's wages just to have enough for every person to have a bite. And then the other said, one of the others said, hey, well, here, here's, here's this little boy. He's got some fish and some bread, maybe, but I don't know how it's going to help a lot of people. And Jesus said, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. And, and we know the story. Like, he's like, they start giving it out, and it just begins to multiply. And they feed all the thousands of people there, and there's so much food left over. There's 12 baskets full of leftovers. 
Like we read that and go, man, that's a crazy, awesome miracle. I've told you a couple already that Jesus has done in this sermon. But the question is, is, is do we believe that really happened? Come on, do we believe that happened? Like, do we believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Like, like, that's a miracle. Like, it's a miracle, right? So my, my question to us is, like, do we believe that God can still do miracles? And if, if the answer is yes, then we've got to put that little, barely enough, I'm not sure if God mindset can mindset out of our heads and imagine what will happen in our lives and imagine what will happen in our church and imagine what will happen in our city and in this region through our church. God's about to take the limits off of your mind. You're going to lose that barely getting by, scraping by mentality, barely making it thinking and take the limits off. I've come to tell you that he is El Shaddai. He is is more than enough. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. So Avenue, enlarge your capacity to believe and receive supernatural miracles. It's time to renew our minds and open our hearts to think supernatural for our God is able. Come on, touch your neighbor and say he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able to save your family. He's able to fix that broken marriage. He's able to heal your sick body. He's able to bless you when you're broke. He's able to give you peace when you're stressed. He's able to set you free from that addiction, from the addiction to alcohol, from the addiction to drugs, from the addiction to pornography. He's able to turn your mess into a miracle message of a merciful God. He's able to protect you. He's able to promote you. He's able to make a way when there seems to be no way. Oh, is there anybody thankful that we serve a God who is able? Surely this house is full of people thankful that nothing is impossible for God. Come on, give him a take the limits off praise today. Woo! Come on, I need you to get up out of your seat, find five people and tell them our God can do all things. Our God can do all things. Come on, online, talk to me. Our God can do all things. All things, all things. Somebody shout, all things. So don't limit your faith by getting too familiar with God. And God's past proves that he can handle your future. And here's the last one, I'm done. Number three, if you know that God can, then trust that he will. If you know that God can then trust that he will. Somebody shout, God can. God can. can. Verse 21 and 22, when the Lord heard them, he was furious. His fire broke out against Jacob, and his wrath rose against Israel, for they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. In Mark chapter 9, another story. A father had a son who, when you read the symptoms of what was going on, it sounded like the man, this young, this father had a son who was was tormented with, with seizures. It sounded absolutely terrible the way it was described. And the father even said it's been known to throw him in, in, in water and throw him in fire on certain occasions. And so this, this boy, this son of his, was tormented by this evil spirit Jesus referred to. And, and so Jesus simply comes up to where this situation is unfolding. And this, this father says to Jesus, Jesus, if you can do anything, please help. If you can do anything... Please help. So in this passage, we have Jesus standing there before this father. And Jesus says, if you can. Notice carefully the words, if you can. For they are the key to understanding Jesus. This boy's father had just said, if you can do anything. And Jesus says back, in essence, if you can do anything. If you can. But that's not the issue, Jesus is saying. If I can is not the problem. Of course I can. No, no, my friend, the burden is on you because everything is possible to those who believe. That's, that's what he said to him. And so Jesus, I mean, check the. I don't think you understand how intimidating of a moment that this was. Jesus, the Savior of the world, the Messiah, the Chosen One, God in flesh was standing in front of this Father. The world is standing still. Eternity is passing between them. And in this story before us, the father was called to believe because Christ told him that his faith was the condition to his son being healed. The father is facing Jesus, and Jesus is saying, it's not a question of whether I can do it, but will you believe? 
Because everything is possible to those who believe. If this father doesn't believe, his son is going to remain just as he is. No pressure. Now comes one of the greatest responses in all of Scripture. The father, kind of not really sure, not a loss. Man, I want to. He says one of the most real responses. I do believe, Jesus. But help me overcome my unbelief. Here is an honest man, one of the most transparent characters in the Bible. Real. You know any real people? His faith was trembling, imperfect, but real. And a faith which declares itself publicly and at the same time recognizes its weaknesses and asks for help. That's real faith. What an encouragement to everybody here today. You and I don't need to think that we're being hypocrites because our faith is not perfect. The questions we've got to answer is this. Do you believe that God can do anything? And do you believe that he will do what he promised to do? The father believed in Jesus and his promise, and it happened. Jesus heals the boy. Amazing. Amazing testimony. So the way I look at it, there are two types of people in this world, two types of people in this church, the can-godders and the God-canners. The can-godders and the God-canners. The can-godders say things like, well, can God? Will God? Is God really able? Well, I don't know. Well, my kids went through that many years ago when their life was a wreck and fell apart. Can God? Can God, well, God sometimes just doesn't choose to heal people. Can God? Man, those people will probably never get saved. Can God or say things like, well, I don't have enough, or I just don't understand, or I'll never be able to do that, or I wish I could like them. Can God or say, well, it's just the card that life has dealt me. You need to understand something and get this in your head today. No limit faith activates God's limitless power over your life. And God's looking for a church full of believers who will rise up in East Tennessee and declare, my God can. Come on, touch your neighbor and tell them, I'm a God canner, baby. I'm a God canner. Hey, church, our God can. He's able. John chapter 14, 12 through 14 says it this way. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works that I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Father can bring glory, so the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And the last time that I checked, the Bible says that nothing is impossible with God. So therefore, yes, God can. And yes, you can. You can overcome. You will be victorious. You will be healed. God will come through and he'll supply more than enough. And according to Mark chapter 9, verse 23, all you have to do is believe. Why? Because God can. Oh, touch somebody and tell them, Take the limits off. Take the limits off. Take the limits off. Don't you dare limit God. Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Come on. Somebody shout, nothing is impossible. <laughs> exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Oh, can we just stand to our feet right now and give God an Ephesians 3.20 praise? Whatever it is that you need God to do in your life, let out a praise. Woo! Come on, the miracle you receive will be determined by the praise that you give. If you're not already staying with me all over the house, somebody shout, take the limits off. Take the limits off. I'm wrapping this up. I'm wrapping this up. Exceedingly. Abundantly. Above all. In the Greek, it's hyperek perisu. When you break it down, it's above, beyond, superior. Out of. It's more than sufficient. Get there. Listen. It's, it's the supply from above. Super abundantly beyond. Quite beyond all measure. Infinitely more than. Beyond what is normal or regular. Without limit, it's 
take the limits off things. I am tired of asking God and then settling for the small stuff. What would happen if as a church we decided to truly take the limits off of God and start believing for the impossible? I'm reminded of a story in Joshua chapter 10. Joshua is, is leading the Israelites and, and they're called on to, bat, to battle the, the Amorites. And, and so they needed more time in the day and, 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 and they're fighting in a, in a war um, for their land. And it's just crazy what's going on. And, and, and God's using Joshua as a mighty leader for the Israelites. And, and, and so Joshua seeing the status of what's going on. I mean, he didn't even bat an eye. I mean, he didn't even think twice about it. He didn't go fast and pray before he asked this one request. I mean, he just stopped in the middle of the day. And check out what it says on verse 12 of Joshua chapter 10. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to the Israelites, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the presence of Israel and said, Son, stand still over Gibeon and moon over the valley of Ashkelon and the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on its enemies <laughs> I don't have the time to break down the scientific details of what just happened so the, the sun is being flung through our universe at a ridiculous amount of speed and, and, and somewhere around the sun, we're being hurled around it. And we're staying in place. And somehow we're still able to stand right here on the face of the earth. And not only are we going around the sun, but we're spinning at like a thousand miles per hour. And, and, and Joshua just, he doesn't know all that. We do now. Joshua doesn't know what it is. All he knows is that in the morning... The sun goes like that. Hey, God, I'm going to need you to stop that right there. Because whenever that's right there, we have daytime. And because he just had the faith to believe that God could do it. Hey, sun, stand still. Cool. You kidding me? The sun stopped and the moon stopped. Do, do we believe that? Then what in the You think that your bank account is a too big of a problem for God? You think the sickness you're dealing with is too big of a problem for God? You think your children are too big of a problem for God? You think your job situation is too hard for God? You think your lonely nights are too hard for God? There is nothing too hard for God. Hey, Avenue, miracle signs and wonders do not happen because of wishful thinking. It's a result of active faith in God. What would happen if we as a church decided to take the limits off and start believing for the impossible. Remember, remember how when you were first? You're so good, Lord. But somewhere you limited. You stopped, you stopped believing. You, just, you went from I'm full of faith to a little bit of faith. And limit, limited. What, what would happen? I got this other table. Limited, one serving. Come. I mean, I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'll take that one all day long. You, you can keep your box of Fruit Loops. With seven servings, I'll take the big boy brand and go to 23 servings. You, 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 keep your, you keep your limited faith, your snack size. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go to limitless faith with 27 servings. You, you, you can have your, what's that, the, the fun size? Keep your fun size. Keep your share size. 
I, I'm going for the, the, the party size, baby. If, if, if you take... Can I see that bag of m and real quick? I'll get back to you. I'll get back, whoever wants that. Three servings. It says... What's that say? That ain't no share size. You want to live a life with no limits? I've now got 38 servings. I couldn't share before. The cleaning team just panicked. If, if we would take the limits off to what God, look, you can, keep your, you can keep your sissy dog lollipops all you want to. I'm going with the whirly pop. I, I'm taking the limits off. If we take the limits off, we live a life with no limits. We'd experience the God of more than enough. We wouldn't have just enough, we'd have more than enough. Here's the big idea. Take the limits off of God so that you can live life with no limits, overflowing with God's blessings and miracles. If we would just take the limits off, we would believe that with God all things are possible and nothing would be withheld from us. We believe that our kids would get saved. And we believe that God could heal us and our marriages would be restored. And we believe that He can calm every storm. And we believe that He can break every chain and destroy every stronghold. Come on, anybody want to be a part of it? Take the limits off, church. Come on, give Him a big praise in the house. Woo! I want to throw these m ms so bad. I'd be in trouble at lunch. If we if we take the limits off, we'd never worry because God's never been beat. He's never messed up. He's never missed it. Even when we don't understand. He's never come up short. He's always shown up right on time. We'd always trust in Him. We'd always rely on Him. And God's saying, don't you dare put a limit on me, for there's nothing too hard for me all. Why don't you take the limits off of what God can do in your life, in your health, in your marriage, in your kids, in your finances, in your parents, and be amazed at what God can do in you and through you. Come on. I wish I could find a house full of people who know that God can do all things. Woo! So here, here's what we're going to do. I know it's 12:40. Lunch is going to be good. By the show of hands, how many of you need God to step into a situation of your life? All right, I'm, I'm going to need some help. I'm going to need some help. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. If your hand is up, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, "Neighbor, I need a praise partner." Come on. Keep your hand up, keep your hand up, keep your hand up. Look at that same neighbor and say, same neighbor. Will you be my praise partner? If somebody just asked you that question, grab them by the hand and get them down here to this altar as fast as you can. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get down to this altar, get down to this altar. Get down to this altar, come on. There are hands up all over the place. Get down to this altar, come on, come on, come on, come on. As you get down here, just begin to throw those hands up in the air. Oh, come on. Whatever the miracle you need will be determined by the level of your praise today. Come on. Just begin to praise God right there where you're standing. Come on. Get down here. Get down here. Get down here. Come on. What are you believing for? Come on. Sing it out. You call the ones to Hey, hey. With your power. Come on. Y'all push in right here. Y'all push in. Y'all come on in. Come down the aisle. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Lift those hands. Sing it out. Come on, out of your 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hey, I want you, I want you to look at the person next to you. And I want you to ask them, I want you to ask them, what can I pray for you about? And just give them a one-answer response. Healing, finances, family, personal, like ask them. If somebody asks you that question, return the favor. Ask them, what can I pray for you about? What can I, what am I believing for with you? As you got that answer, listen, I want them to start singing again. I want you to praise God. I want you to pray to the Lord. I want you to worship Him and trust Him. And I want you to pray and praise for that person like you'd want somebody to pray for you.
I want you to praise God for that situation. Praise God for his miracle in this situation and pray for them like you'd want somebody to pray for you. Come on, as they begin to sing this next, this next part, I want you just to lift that up. Come on, from your mouth. Come on. Father, we thank you. Yeah, we thank you, Lord. Come on, church. Jesus has triumphed. Come on, church. Over the grave. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Battle. The battle is won. Nothing can stand. Nothing can stand. Yes, God. Against our God. situation Lord in all the busyness and all the chaos of the world and all the things happening you still have time to know us by name and you still have time to hear our prayer and receive our praise and know that our trust is in you Lord, I'm asking, will you work miracles in this house? Oh God, we take the limits off to what you can do. Lord, I thank you for what's being done in the spiritual realm right here in this moment. That our praise and our worship is causing a shift in the atmosphere. Our praise and our worship is piercing the darkness and touching your heart. And you're going to respond. I know you are, God. You're going to respond to the praise that is being lifted in this moment in this house. So, God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. For you alone are worthy and you alone are able. 
we trust you wholeheartedly and we stand in faith that you can do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or even imagine according to the power of Christ working in us thank you Jesus I don't know I don't know exactly what it is that you're believing God for Don't ever let the size of your problem bring down the size of your praise. And so whatever it is that you need God to do, I want you to, to praise God. In fact, I want to count to three. And when I get to three, I just want you to clap, shout, dance, whatever you need to do. You've got a 30-second window just to give him everything you've got. Because your praise is declaring your trust in him. That he can do all things. I don't know how bad of a miracle you need, but you do. And so on the count of three, I want you to let your praise reflect your desperation. Come on, you ready, Avenue? Come on, on the count of three, give him everything you've got. Ready? One, two, three. Come on. Time. There is nothing. There is nothing. There is nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing that can stop our God. Real worship right here, just real worship. need to um, some of you may not understand the terminology that I'm about to use but, but I feel the anointing of the Lord 
here to uh, anoint some individuals with oil and pray over them and believe whatever it is that you're dealing with and battling and I want to uh, I want to give an opportunity for people to accept Christ if you're one of those individuals who you want to stick around and let us anoint you with oil and pray over you do that after we dismiss You know, there's nothing, there's nothing shameful about giving your life to Christ. And there's nothing shameful about rededicating your life to the Lord. And so I just, I feel, I feel like we need to do this with eyes open, heads up today. And this, this, there's nothing embarrassing about this moment. This is, this is a beautiful moment. And so I want to give you the opportunity in front of God and everybody to make the most important decision you could ever make. And if, if you don't know Christ as Savior, or maybe, maybe you've drifted and you've walked away from God, and maybe today you need to recommit your life to Christ. I want to, I want to pray with you right where you are, right where you are, maybe online. We want to celebrate with you and pray with you. I've made this decision. There's countless people that have made this decision. This is a beautiful thing. It's an incredible thing. And so if that's you on the count of three, we just lift that hand just so I know who I'm praying with today. If that's you, say, Pastor Justin, will you include me with that prayer? I, I need God in my life. Come on, if that's you, one, two, three. Just lift up that hand. Yeah, thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Proud of you, buddy. Proud of you. Yeah. Praise God. That's real right there. That's yeah. Maybe somebody online as well, you want to hit that hand emoji so we know who we're praying with. But those of you who lifted that hand, I want you to pray this from your heart and from your mouth. Avenue, let's join them. I want you to say, Jesus, I need you. I'm lost without you. I give my life to you. And I confess, Jesus, you are Lord. Forgive me of my sins. And come into my life. And from this moment forward, I'm not running from you. I'm running to you because you love me and you're my Savior in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say a big amen right there. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. I, I need somebody to give him a hug right now. Come on. We love you, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Woo! If this message spoke to you today and you took your next step of making a decision to know Christ, we want to celebrate with you and walk this out with you. Simply click the link in the comments below and a pastor will reach out to you and celebrate the greatest decision you have ever made. At The Avenue, we know that we're stronger together, everyone matters, and you belong here.